This video will cover investment sales and how to track buyer requirements and sellers in the marketplace when you're pursuing a listing. From a buyer perspective, your buyers more or less are going to be contacts or people that you've added to your database. You can add the contact and populate as much information as you have about the contact. That being said, within the contact record, once it is saved, you could always obviously track activities, calls and appointments and tasks that you've got for that person. However, when we talk about profiling their investment criteria or some of uh, the ways in which they're interested in purchasing property, on the right side of the prop contact record is an area called preferences and really preferences is there to capture that specific information about that investment criteria i.e it's a sale they've got a price min and a max they've got maybe some area space uh, requirements some property type requirements and if they are in the multifamily um, space perhaps they've got some unit requirements and geography and whatnot it's important to note that you could actually customize this form as you see fit because really at the end of the day the idea of tracking a prospective buyer with their uh, multiple portfolios or preferences rather is that you could then search on it so that you can curate a list of buyers that fit that plugged in criteria you've put in the other goal of this is or why you wouldn't have them as flat fields here is that a person can have multiple preferences they may be interested in industrial properties for a different price range or in a different market etc so that you wouldn't really want to cram everything into just one preference record but potentially consider adding multiple preferences for that one contact which is a buyer and again the goal here is that you're sort of you're logging that so if you do come across listings that fit that criteria you can make that match now as far as searching how you would go about searching that does imply you would have a syndic search which is an excellent tool to use that will allow you to really be as specific as you need to be in this example i'm going to conduct a search for contacts i.e buyers that have a particular uh, preference so while building that search I'll create a net new search template and I will refine it by saying that that contact has preferences where let's say the price maximum is between certain values. And again, this is demo data, so take it with a grain of salt. And let's say between the price and maybe, uh, well, let's just start with that. So what I've plugged in here, um, the fictitious data yielded 71 contacts that had a price maximum between 200,000 and 20 million, obviously quite a large range. Point is that you could obviously search on, back to the edit screen here, multiple criteria. So if it was price, but also I wanted to search on property type, let's say how many of those are actually office, that list of 71 got dwindled to 35. So you can add as many or as little filters as you want as far as building your buyer list, depending on the preferences that you've inputted to begin with, right? So now you've got your list of 35, you could always save that list, save it as uh, office buyers between, you know, whatever you want to name that list. You can um, export the list to Excel, you can mass email those people uh, to send them an attachment. That attachment could be for a listing. So this is really useful because capturing the buyer requirements and then curating that list will allow for everything to be streamlined within this application. On the flip side of that, people who are buyers can also be sellers or you, know, you could use this index to track both even if they are distinctly separate. With the example of a owner or a prospective seller is that you might be pursuing that person to win a listing such that you want to represent them in selling that building. And again, that person could be a contact. They could also be an account if they're an LLC or a business. You can go about tracking that person's, um, again, the activity, the calls that you make to, the reach, uh, to reach that person and eventually win the listing. Probably the next step you'll wanna do after tracking activities is to um, add the properties that that person owns, assuming that when you're trying to pursue a listing, it's for a particular building. And so, in that case, one of the next steps as far as data entry is to um, add the property that that person owns. You'll, if you don't see properties as a related link in, in your trial or in your appendix, 
you could always just move over to the next tab and add the actual property. Um, and then within the form or the fields of the property, there's an area to link who the owner landlord is. In that case, you could, you know, we're on Mike's record in the background there. You could say that Mike Kaufman is the owner and continue as you see fit. So really what you're doing here is adding the physical asset that that person owns and linking them to it. You could enter as little or as much information about this property as you can. There won't be a sale price on here because this is the physical property. Um, so that being said, you know, assuming you've not won the listing yet, you're just adding the owner and you're adding the property that they own. Um, if you won the listing, then you could by all means create the listing record, which is really just the agreement, right? The agreement that you have to sell it. So they're distinct and the property is a physical building. The listing is the agreement and the listing will have an expiration date and then will allow you to put in the uh, sale price or asking price and, and all the sort of financials tied with that. So from a workflow perspective, from a seller's perspective, again, you could create the contact or the account or both, add the properties that that person or company owns. Once you win the listing, create a listing record. And then from there, uh, you'll be really accepting buyers more or less, and you'll want to jump straight to deals. Deals is really the opportunity pipeline, whereby um, in your case, you could, if on the investment side, it could be a buyer rep to purchase a property, or in this case, a seller rep. And this will allow you to uh, track basically the maturation of that deal with prospective buyers that come to the that come to the table. Um, it could be that it's brokers on the behalf of prospective buyers. It could be the buyer directly. Creating the deal allows you to manage the pipeline and, and the flow of that transaction from beginning to end so that it eventually, when it closes, creates a sale comp. The same, by the way, would occur for a buyer up deal. If you represented a buyer to purchase a property, um, you would select a buyer up deal, go through that process of populating all of the info that you see fit, including the property they'll eventually purchase and the relationships involved and what that um, sale price was of that property cap rate, et cetera. And when you close the deal, it also creates a sale comp for that property. So they're all sort of pushing towards the same thing. Um, if you're strictly in the investment space, I might recommend that you maybe get rid of some of the lease verbiage that we have in here. This would be on the tenant rep or landlord rep side. So um, a lot of investment brokers or companies just exclusively deal with that. Some dabble in both. And so it's hard to say, you know that you can click and drag tabs as you see fit. And I would personally probably move the ones that I use most to the left and those that I use least to the right, just uh, from an order of operations and significance. So that being said, at the end of the day, every database begins with accounts and contacts. Having those people and their companies populated at minimum is a start and then tracking the investment preferences um, of the contact within that using a syndic search to query those buyers to be able to present them with possible matches or just to have ongoing curated lists of buyers. And then from the seller side, adding the properties that those owners own, adding a listing to signify that you have an agreement, possibly even tracking the outbound activities you have for that listing, such as um, some of the e-blasts or events that you might have. This is really more for you to track the activities you've done to pitch that listing, to sell it. Um, so that if you need to report on it, you can to the owner. So that is a quick overview of how to use a Syndex RE for the investment sales space.